everyone and welcome to another episode of All This Tech. Today I would like to talk about a very special device for me, the Sony Network Walkman E105. You see, as a young man I used to carry around a portable CD player and a pouch full of CDs in order to silence the world around me with the sweet sweet sound of music. But at one point around 2005, I got tired of that old thing with all of its shenanigans and decided to buy my very first and last dedicated MP3 player. I had a very limited budget so an iPod was out of the question. At the same time I wanted to avoid getting a cheap Chinese device because I thought those were guaranteed to last days before they inevitably stopped working or caught fire in your pocket. My other criteria was that I wanted a screen, at least a small one so an iPod Shuffle or similar devices were discarded as well. I somehow ended up with the NWE105 and I gotta say, I pretty much adored this thing. It's tiny, light, easy to use, it has excellent battery life and if you happen to run out of juice on a trip, you simply pop in a fresh AAA and you're good to go. The first thing that strikes you about this device is that it looks weird, like a shiny orange yo-yo and that it's really light and small. Also, this particular unit is a little bit beat up. Here's what it looked like when it was brand new. The ergonomics are interesting, because although its round shape and curved back fit my hand perfectly, I have a hard time pushing some of the buttons, which are scattered all over the place. You definitely get used to it though, to the point where you can use it without taking it out of your pocket. So, how was it to actually use this thing? Let's start from the beginning, shall we? The first thing we need to do is plug it into a computer with its mini USB port and transfer some music. Windows detects it like a flash drive, but if you just drag and drop files they won't show up for playback on the device. It actually requires a music manager, sort of like iTunes, to convert and transfer music for playback. Sonic Stage is the application that Sony developed for that purpose, although it sounds more like some terrible Sonic game. But they also offered an alternative, creatively called the MP3 File Manager, that provides basic functionality while being lighter, easier to use and portable. You can actually keep this one on the device itself, giving you that plug-and-play action it was missing. The big benefit to using Sonic States, though, is that it allows you to compress your music to Sony's proprietary Track 3 audio codec, which not only increases the amount of music that you can fit on your device, but also prolongs its battery life considerably. That is, at the expense of some audio fidelity, of course. Here's a comparison of the amount of extra music you could fit by doing this. Not too shabby. Sonic Stage is a bit clunky and slow and weird, but perfectly functional. Simply import your music, connect your device, select the compression level your heart most desires, select all the albums or tracks you want to transfer and then go do something else because it will take its sweet time. But once it's done and you unplug your fully loaded network walkman from the computer and throw in a AAA battery, you're ready to go. One cool thing about this guy is that it has no on or off state. As long as it has some juice left on its cell, you're just a button press away from instant music. So, no waiting for an OS to load, a silly splash screen to go away, or a hard drive to spin up. Using the group slash hold switch, you change between the three different modes of the device. Hold, used to prevent accidental inputs, song, used to navigate through individual songs, and group, used to navigate through your folders. It's a rather simple system, but more than enough when you're dealing with only 512 megabytes worth of music. Did I mention this thing has only 512 megabytes? Yeah, that's all. Aside from that, you get all of the functions you would expect from a device like this. Different playback modes, a couple of bass enhancing sound options, and the option to disable the backlight to extend the battery life, amongst other things. And how good was it anyway? Well, pretty good in my opinion. 
It's so light, small and resistant that you can take it everywhere and even punish it quite a bit. In fact, I dropped mine innumerable times, including two times into the pool, and it still works to this day. Everything you do on this device feels fast and smooth. I love how they implemented quick animations for most of the actions. They provide effective visual feedback to your commands and make the whole thing feel really nice and polished. The screen, although small, is clear enough and does a good job of letting you know where you stand in your library. Battery life, as I said before, is fantastic, and the fact that it runs on an easily replaceable AAA cell is quite convenient. Also, having the option to compress your music in order to get more out of your storage and battery is great. Trying to disassemble this device is not easy, and if you're not careful you will break several plastic bits, like I did. And inside there's not a lot to see, except for the round PCV, which I think looks pretty nice, and the cutest backup battery I've ever seen. It's also cool to slip the AAA in there and see the thing spring to life like this. In retrospect, I'm glad I went with this guy for my MP3 playing needs at the time. It may look weird, have very little storage and require a music manager to function, but it makes up by being reliable, unobtrusive and efficient. It's one of those devices that I can look at and think, yes, I extracted a lot more value out of this thing than the price I paid for buying it, and that makes me feel good. And I believe that's all I have to say about the Sony NWE105, a great little thing for its time. Perhaps not the best in general, but rather excellent in its own ways. Well, I hope you enjoyed my rumble about this nifty piece of tech. So, have a nice one, and see you next time.